science, man. Let's get into this. Why yeah. is white ash? Why is it bullshit? Why does it mean nothing in your words? So it, 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 when you're when you're looking at any ash sciences from from tobacco to cannabis, there there are several things at play here that incorporate what color your ash is going to be as a final result. Um, most importantly, is going to be water content. Black ash is no more an indicator than than moisture content due to unspent carbon. So in order to make sure that your flowers of ideal quality in order to retain uh, terpene of flavonoids, essential oils, there has to maintain a specific value of bound water within the flower. Bound water can't grow bacteria because it's attached to, it's attached to already another element. The bacteria can't pull the water through its membrane. Bacteria can't grow on bound water. So that's principle number one. At 0.65 AW is the ideal uh, water content for dried cured flour. It's low enough where it inhibits pathogenic and yeast growth on the flour itself, and still high enough that those terpenes and volatile, volatile compounds are still hydrated. So in that circumstance, because there's a little bit of moisture in the flour, when it burns at a specific temperature, you're gonna be left with both white and black ash. So if you have salt and pepper ash, it's not an indication that your flour is not as good as the guy with all white ash. It's simply what ash does. It's just unspent carbon. Um, terpenes, flavonoids, cannabinoids are all vaporized at temperatures far lower than it takes to get that to that white ash point. So even if you're left with black ash, you've already long gone through the flavorful stuff anyways. 100%, man. Oh, I love that. Listen, he spit it out, boys. Like, hey, there's